Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, checking in a little episode of Car Chronicles. So I'm having to shoot Car Chronicles because I'm ripping and running for my wife before we leave. And this is how I'm getting a couple videos ready for you because I ain't going to be able to sit down and shoot whole talks with Tony. Ran out of time. It's crazy when you realize like life and how you can run out of some time now when you serving a whole lot of people and you know trying to please everybody and help everybody out it's like being a servant it's like sometimes you trying to help so many people like my actual work day may be like two hours and then the rest of the hours is i'm helping people you know i'm serving people like i need to talk to you i need to talk to you i need to talk to you and a lot of times people don't realize like if you have three million people online that's a whole lot of people and it's a lot of those people that's reaching out to talk. So not only trying to help those people, but then imagine how many people that's in your phone, how many cousins you got, how many brothers and sisters, associates, colleagues, friends. And, and then when you start to build your brand and or your company or whatever, and you start to do a little something, as humans, we like to brush shoulders. We want to brush shoulders with people that's doing something. So then that also put a lot of demand on you because everybody want to be on the phone with you because you may be the only person they know that's, you know, successful or that's doing something positive in life. But it's so many people. And what those people sometimes don't think about is it's only so many hours in a day that a person has and, and the time that they give you, they'll never get back. And I think about that sometimes when I'm talking to people that I know that make, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm like, they only got so much time in a day. And, you know, a lot of times we fail to think about that. You know what? I'm going to get my wife a coffee. But, you know, I wanted to um, talk to you about some. Somebody asked me if I could do a video about little white lies. And that's something right there. When you look at the little things in life, the little things, the little things, the small fox spoil the vine, as the good books say. And it's the little things that can destroy the big thing. And when you think about in a relationship, in a friendship, when you tell them little lies, just the little insignificant, meaningless lies it kills the trust and it breaks down the trust and so you have to ask yourself you know what am i lying about and why am i lying about this what is the benefit of this lie what is this lie gonna benefit me and so that was one of the things to where me and my wife had to get over is telling those little white lies you know telling those little lies because we want to appear as perfect and we don't want to confront whatever this little issue is. And so we tell a lie about it. And instead of communicating, we'll tell a lie or we'll omit the truth. And then the other person find out and now you got a kingdom issue. So now what was supposed to be something small, something that was supposed to be meaningless, now it mean everything because you told a lie or you omitted the truth. And you've heard before it said honesty is the best policy. And that's the truth. Honesty is the best policy. So you got to think about that and you got to say, you know what? Why am I lying? And I started to think and I started to say, you know, let, let me start telling the truth to people I'm talking to. Let me start telling the truth about whatever it is I'm dealing with. Because you don't have to remember the truth. What you got to remember is the lie. And the more lies you tell, the more lies get stacked on top of that. And so sometimes when I'm, I'm dealing with somebody and I meet somebody and we're doing business and they're lying. And so they'll tell a lie about, you know, the income or what something costs or something like that. And then later they'll tell me something else and they forget the lie they told me. 
So the first time is 50, the number is 50. The next time the number is 75. The next time the number is 125 and that's because now time that they tell me the truth. And so when I tell somebody something and I know it's something that I probably lied about before, I say, nah, this right here is, is what this right here earns. This what this project earns. I probably lied to you about, about this in the past because I don't tell this to anybody. I say that just to let them know it's a possibility that I probably told you a lie because I don't tell nobody about this. But now that I'm closer to you, I'm going to tell you this. But I believe because I don't practice lying that I probably told them that truth before and just didn't realize that I told them that I was that transparent from the jump. And I look at this and I remember when we was going through with my marriage, me and my wife, I started to realize that she kind of was, she was raised like to be a perfectionist. She was raised to be a perfectionist and mistakes were the devil. And mistake, mistakes were not rewarded or appreciated. And we all make mistakes and, and mistakes are necessary for life. And we gotta learn how to teach our children how to want mistakes and how to embrace mistakes. And what I mean is like when they're doing their schoolwork, when they're cleaning up their room, like whatever they're doing, we have to get to a place to where we can teach our children how to be okay with mistakes. But with my wife, she was such a people pleaser that she would tell little white lies about nothing. It would be something so small and still to this day, sometimes I feel like she might be telling me a little white lie, but I'm just like, so what I have to do is try to create a safe space because the environment she grew up in, you know, her parents being so harsh on mistakes to where if she got a 98, why didn't you get a hundred? And she would hear that from certain, you know, people in her family who will remain nameless. Why didn't you get a hundred? What did such and such get on, on her test? She got a hundred. How did she beat you? How did you let her beat you? Why didn't you get a hundred? And so it was this thing to where people, adults or friends and family would attack her for her mistakes for the things that she didn't do right. I got an interview here um, with Arthur, so I got to get going. But um, I'm going to finish this and I'm going to give him a call back. And so what you have to realize is you got to teach your children how to embrace their mistakes, embrace their shortcomings, and encourage them on what they can do to get better, on what they can do to make, make a difference, to help in that situation. That's what you got to be able to do. And, and when in your dealings, just always, always tell the truth. In your dealings, tell the truth. So when you get to a place and you say, okay, well, I don't want to do this because of this. So if, if I got to turn down a speaking engagement, it'll be Mr. Gaston can't make this engagement. If they say, well, we would like to know why. Well, unfortunately, the rate that you offer is far beneath his standard speaking rate. Well, what is his standard speaking rate? Such and such. Oh, wow. How does he get that? When does he get that? I can't tell that from social media. Yeah, he doesn't promote his speaking engagements and do highlight reels like other speakers, but he could speak to his own audience of 3.5 million people at home and be with his family. You, if you really want to know the truth now, I'm going to run you down the truth when I can't do something. And so, and I tell somebody. So in your dealings, when they give you assignment at work and you can't do that assignment, let them know you can't do that assignment and why you can't do it. Why you not comfortable doing it. When they trying to get you and your friends want you to go somewhere and do something, let them know why you can't do it. And get in a habit of being truthful. 
Because when you lie, even though you can fool man, you can't fool God. So what you're doing is you hindering and you blocking your blessings because you don't have integrity. And when I say the little things, you got to think about the little things is the things that the decisions you have to make when nobody's looking. Like the other day, I gave some of the students a, a financial blessing. And one of the students said, Tony, I don't, you know, don't give it to me. Give it to the members of the blessed tribe. Now, if you in the blessed tribe, not the members, my moderators, if you a moderator in the blessed tribe and you see this message, write in the comments if you received $62.50. Put that in the comment just so if people know if I'm lying. And to my knowledge, it's four moderators. To my knowledge, if it's five or six, then that 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 right there would be my fault. But to my knowledge, I think it's four moderators that I see in the when I'm doing the QA. And she and I gave each one of these students who had invested in X amount of classes, these certain classes, I sent them a $250 blessing. When she said she didn't want her 250, I could have said, Okay, I'm finna keep this 250 in my pocket. But the money was committed to her for supporting me. So when she said, I want to pay it forward, she said, I want to pay it forward and give it to the moderators of the blessed tribe. I could have said to myself, well, the moderators don't know her at all. Don't know she said this. I'm going to keep the 250 in my pocket. Guess what? Being a human, I know probably eight or nine out of 10 people would have kept that 250 in their pocket. Because in my past, I have done that. In my past business dealings, I have been given some and somebody say, hey, do this right here with this. And I'll be like, I'm not finna go through all that work and trying to find this person and find that person. But then I came to a place years ago to where somebody write in and say, hey, I wanna sponsor three people with your book. I wanna sponsor 10 people for this course. What, I, what we'll do is go back through the emails and find the people who wrote in asking for a discount or asking for a payment plan or asking for, you know, whatever, sponsorship or scholarship. I'll find them and we'll bless them with that. And so I started to have that integrity in the little things. And so just like with that 250, I wanted to keep it because I had committed myself to blessing these seven individuals who had signed up for X amount of courses on Tony Gass's Academy. So when I did the math, six of them I was giving $250 to, and one of them I was giving $1,000 to. And I'm getting ready to go out of town. My partner wanted me to get uh, $5,000 cash out the ATM. You know, I got to pay my mama um, house on the first, got her cars in the shop because she got into a little wreck i got to pay that got to pay my mother-in-law house so it's thousands and thousands going out at one time and i'm like oh man what did i do just sitting here you know looking for something to do on this hill with for my students in the academy i done committed six times two is 1200 and then 50 times six is 300 so that's 1500 i committed plus i gave one of them a thousand so that's 2500 dollars. that's not a little bit of money so when she said i don't need the 250 give it to the moderator i was like who i need to say this 250 but i did what she told me to do with the financial blessing that she told me to keep that i was trying to bless her with now, some people could have said, well, look, I was giving her a gift. I don't owe her that. So I ain't technically got to get it to nobody because this ain't for the moderators. This is for her because she done invested over a thousand dollars on Tony Gaston Academy. You know, I just blessed the model. I just blessed the moderators. Like I, I randomly blessed the moderators um, for those of y'all who didn't know that. But and that's another thing I tell you, I don't tell everything I do now until I need to make a point of it. But I randomly blessed the moderators, you know. Um, and I try to do that each month or when I finish a live, especially if it was a draining long live, I try to send them a blessing and uh, and they can attest to that. But we, we don't talk about everything that we do. And that's what other people need to understand is that people only show you what they want you to see.
So you can't base a whole judgment off a person off of what they tell you. And if somebody tell you something about themselves that's transparent, that's embarrassing, that is, you know, a mistake they made, never use that against that person or throw that in their face or put that in your argument because you wouldn't even know that had they not told you. But the way the world we live in, somebody will be transparent and tell you a failure that they made or something that they overcome and people will take and weaponize that against them and say, well, oh, Tony said at his wife used to tell him little white lies. So see that they marriage ain't good. And he said he used to tell her little white lies. See, I told you you can't believe them people. And it's like, I told you that because it was a part of our growth. And so, and now I'm telling you the other side of it. And so when I started focusing on the little things and doing the little things right, guess what happened? God showed up and showed out. God showed up and showed out and I started receiving blessings and blessings and blessings and more blessings. And all I could equate it to is just like being in alignment, being in alignment and having my heart pure because an impure heart won't receive pure things. And that's what you got to realize and understand. So focus on the little things. Stop telling them little lies. Stop living with that little bit of lack of integrity and live the way you know you're supposed to be living. And it's Tony Gaskins. God bless you. I got to do an interview um, for a project for somebody, a partner of mine. So we'll talk soon.